But without further ado to get into it, because I know J Jason's got a lot of cool stuff, let's check out the UFO news. Jason is here to give it to us. You looked scared for a minute. You don't have any good stuff? I always have good stuff. I know. But don't hype it up too much. <laughs> okay. I don't want to let anyone down. Oh, you always deliver, buddy. Thank you, sir. Greetings, Alejandro, and hello, everyone. Hello to all of our wonderful listeners and viewers out there. Let's get into your UFO news brief for Monday, August 22nd, 2011. Well, researchers at Penn Pennsylvania State University recently proposed a theory that suggests if extraterrestrials detected changes in Earth's atmosphere due to increased greenhouse gas emissions, they might attack humans to protect other civilizations from humanity's destructive actions. The 33-page study, published in the journal Acta Astronautica, is titled, Would Contact with Extraterrestrials Benefit or Harm Humanity? A Scenario Analysis. And it evaluates the potential risks of a hostile extraterrestrial encounter. Space.com explains the most popular scenario presented in the paper, stating, An extraterrestrial civilization might notice our planet by detecting changes in the spectral signature of Earth, the light radiated by our planet and atmosphere caused by greenhouse gas emissions, and they might frown upon our behavior. According to the International Business Times, media reports about this new study frighten some of the general public with headlines like, <laughs> NASA report, aliens may destroy humanity to protect other civilizations, and NASA, aliens may destroy humanity over greenhouse gases. NASA was forced to quickly respond, clarifying that while one of the paper's authors, postdoctoral student Sean Domigol Goldman, works at NASA headquarters, NASA was in no way involved with the study. NASA posted multiple messages on Twitter addressing the issue with statements like, yes, Drudge Report and Guardian News are mistaken about alien report. It's not NASA research. And again, claims we released a study about aliens are not true. Going even further to clear up the confusion, NASA posted a link to Gamago Goldman's blog where he too addressed the confusion, stating, so here's the thing. This isn't a NASA report. It's not work funded by NASA, nor is it work supported by NASA in other ways. It was just a fun paper written by a few friends, one of whom who happens to, ha to have a NASA affiliation. Yeah. It's sad they get it wrong because they didn't have to, even just saying that this is a student or these are students and to write about some of this uh, speculation is still enough of a story. I mean, it's an interesting concept. It certainly is. You know, they, there are many ways they, they the journalists could have done this. And, you know, if you want to hype it up a bit, you can still mention NASA. But, yeah. you know, you need to clarify that it's a NASA researcher. Mm -hmm. It's not NASA is saying this. And, you know, it's a theory that someone like Stanton Friedman and some of these others, even some of the study scientists have been pushing for a while. Um, I remember the conference in Russia, the SETI conference, they were talking about it. And the whole idea about how we are just kind of crazy. We're screwing stuff up on our planet. So they would probably just kind of segregate us, watch us, contain us, and uh, see how things go. But I would, I would think that this isn't something new to them. If there really are a lot of civilizations out there, a ton of them, they probably ran across other civilizations at the point that we're at. Or they once themselves were at this point. So it's nothing too new. Although I would see how they'd be interested in checking it out, you know. Oh, for sure. The science class. Let's go look at a civilization at this point. Let's go look at a civilization at this point. Right. Fly around and take their notes. Those guys are funny. That's what they did on Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They just flew around and watched people. They didn't, well, they sometimes interfered, but they weren't supposed to. They tried not to, but sometimes... You know, Captain Kirk's, his passion, he would fall so deeply in love with a, a beautiful alien woman that he just couldn't help himself. Well, that goes without saying. Yeah. I completely what understand. Can you do? But Alejandro, you know that this really rubs me the wrong way. I have, I have a, a strong uh, distaste for this theme of pushing the hostile extraterrestrial concept on people that is all we hear about lately. All the television shows, all the specials they're putting on, the Science Channel, yeah. Discovery. It's all about alien attacks. All the movies. But pushing this negative image and, and scaring people about extraterrestrial life. But it always comes back to economics. We're a capital country, capitalist country. It's all about money. It's just like the news is all about um, blood and gore. Um, one rule of thumb in the news has always been if it bleeds, it leads. 
And sure enough, that's what we see all the time. And so then it translates over to UFOs, over to every subject, scare people, sharks attack, bears maul, you know, everything, you know, puppies bite, ah, you know, so it's just all this scare stuff because they feel it makes some money off of it. Yep. Yeah? It just makes money, money, money. And that's all they care well, about. So I'm glad you provided me with a segue to the next story. Cool. And that is one of the leading U.S. Economist says that an alien invasion could fix the troubled economy. There we go. Paul Krugman, New York Times columnist is. and Nobel Prize winner, presented this idea on the CNN show GPS, hosted by Fareed Zakira. Krugman stated, if we discovered the space aliens were planning to attack and we needed a massive buildup to encounter this space alien threat, and inflation and budget deficits took secondary place to that, this slump would be over in 18 months. He credited the idea to an episode of The Twilight Zone, where scientists fake an alien invasion to achieve world peace. But as he explained, this time, we need it in order to get some fiscal stimulus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I was saying, it's already happening. All of these alien movies, alien attack movies, are getting lots of viewers, except for Cowboys and Aliens, <laughs> I guess. Didn't do too good, but Paul's doing good on DVD, some of these others. So it's working. It's making some money. Yeah, some of them work. You know, a, a lot of these movies actually do well, but yeah, like you said, Cowboys and Aliens, and and then like Mars Needs Mom. Yeah, that didn't do too good. Biggest either, disappointments, did it. and yeah. So. But the Smurfs, they got to be alien. You know, they're little blue guys. They can. I'm gonna count them as aliens. I they haven't seen well, too I many think. little blue guys here, so they must be. Yeah. Yeah. But to get back at least the um, story about the uh, them trying to contain us or destroying us because we're destroying the planet. I think that's closer, at least to this whole idea I have, that a lot of them are at least indifferent to us. I mean, that they are kind of like like we would be with animals. We struggle with what should we do. Some of these animals are going out of control. Do we need to contain them? You know, same kind of thing. Um, some may be like, you know, they're kind of pests, so what do we do with this whole thing? As opposed to just it makes more sense than I think coming and destroying just for the hell of it. Right. But movies don't have to make sense, Alejandro. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, in other news, the UK National Archives released another batch of UFO files a couple weeks ago, and we talked about that, which marked the eighth batch of the formerly classified documents to be re released to the public. These latest files, like previous released files, indicate the government's lack of interest in investigating UFO sighting reports. At least that was the perception the Ministry of Defense was trying to create. Nick Pope, who is the desk officer in charge of the MOD's UFO files, recently told the Huffington Post, What's abundantly clear from these files is that, while in public we were desperately pushing the line that this was of no defense interest, but he goes on to state, we were telling the public, we're not interested, this is all nonsense. But in reality, we were desperately chasing our tails and following this up in great detail. Pope divulged an insider's look at the government's game of misleading people. He revealed one tactic used was to downplay UFO reports um, by referring to witnesses as UFO buffs or UFO spotters to make them sound less credible. They additionally use terms like little green men in reports to make the sighting seem silly, which would hopefully reduce the chance of the media picking up the story. When Pope was with the MOD, he too was required to go along with the policy of deception. He told the Huffington Post, I believe in open government and freedom of information. I believe that the UFO phenomenon does raise important defense, national security, and air safety issues. And if I helped kill any initiative on that, I'm deeply sorry. Mm -hmm. I spoke with Lee Spiegel, who wrote the Huffington Post story, and it was really funny because he helped organize the UN thing. We've had Antonio on, talked about that. Antonio's r written about it in our magazine. And Lee Spiegel was the main kind of organizer putting all of that together. And he was shocked when he saw in the last batch how uh, the UK really was trying to stifle his whole effort there uh, with Sir Gary from... Um, Eric Gary from Grenada, who was a real sponsor of it. So it's kind of funny he w that he was referred to in these files and stuff, and then he speaks with Nick Pope, and Nick Pope apologizes for all of that. Although he said Nick Pope did tell him, even though I apologize, you can't really blame me because I was only a teenager when all of this happened. So, But, of course, the stuff in the 90s, he can't apologize for because... Some of the files we even talked about and we have on our website, such as during the Ralph no Noise era, 
he was the person who wrote those letters. Right. We actually confirmed with him recently that he was one of those guys who wrote one of those letters saying, oh, you know, don't worry about it. Yeah. Well, we have much more about that on our website. And our video producer just put together a video on this. And uh, you appear on the video, Alejandro. Me? You do. Yes. And you, you look like crap, but... No, I'm kidding. You look fantastic. It's a, a fun video, so we have that. Because uh, I didn't have my new glasses. I know, new glasses. So we'll have to reshoot the video. <laughs> but yeah. the video's there. We've got articles there. So check that out on openminds.tv. And then uh, there was uh, a UFO that appeared on live TV. Whoa. Maybe. Viewers of Channel 4 News in London were surprised on August 16th when they observed a UFO zooming through the sky in, in the background during an interview with British politician Tom Watson. According to the Metro, viewers called the television station to report the strange object that appeared at the top of the screen before darting in a flash. The UFO is only visible for a couple of seconds, and it is difficult to make out any physical details of the object. An airplane or helicopter have been suggested as possibilities, but the movement demonstrated by the UFO in the video makes these explanations seem unlikely. A seagull or another bird gliding through the London sky could be the identity of the object in question, but that is speculation on my part and others. <laughs> the UFO remains un unidentified and will likely remain so. One factor that makes identifying this particular UFO so challenging is that the Channel 4 interview was most likely shot in front of a green screen with the London video backdrop digitally added to the video, mm. meaning that the London scene with the UFO zooming through the frame was pre-recorded. And unless the television station knows exactly when the London scene was recorded, the option of contacting local air traffic controllers to see if there was any aircraft in the sky at that particular time, eh, that, you don't have that luxury. But again, the object is most likely a bird. Um. Yeah, I'd, it goes so fast, it's hard to tell. It's kind of a, it's a neat video, that's for sure. But if it is something mundane, it's got to it'd probably be a bird, you know, diving because it's like moving It looks like it's dive down. bombing. Yeah, it's kind of cruising. It's not flapping yeah, at all. Right. So. It's just kind of diving, right? Yeah. Um, unless it's something else. And it certainly could be. Yeah. We have no idea what it is. Who knows? No idea. Well, I, I got an say idea, for sure. but yeah, we don't know. And another UFO on video, or UFOs, multiple UFOs, in the sky near Stansted Airport in Essex, England, were captured on video by a motorist on his way to London. The incident allegedly occurred on July 29th, just five days before BBC journalist Mike Sewell reported a flying disc in the same area. The UFOs in the video are bright orbs with white light that shoot through the sky above the M11 motorway, motorway at tremendous, tremendous speeds. And according to The Sun, Former Ministry of Defense UFO researcher and UFO expert Nick Pope said, Assuming it's genuine, it's one of the most bizarre pieces of UFO footage I've seen in a long time. And I'm going to interrupt here and say I question whether or not they actually checked with Nick Pope on this. I think they went through their, their stock Nick Pope quotes because I'm pretty sure that he said that a couple months ago about a similar video. Or not really? a similar video, but about a video. Because I, I know I've seen that quote before from Nick Pope. Mm-hmm. And the sun is sometimes right. questionable. Oh, yeah. But anyway, while the, uh, the orbs of light seen in this video can easily be created with video effect software, it doesn't necessarily mean that this particular video is a hoax. But something else that sends up red flags with this video is the audio in the video. Because if you listen to it, through, if you watch the video and listen with headphones on, you can tell that the audio in the left and right channels are completely different audio tracks. In the left channel, I believe, you hear music which supposedly is coming from the car's stereo, but you don't hear anything else. It's just, just mu music. And in the right track, you hear the people in the car, a man and a woman, freaking out about it. Oh, mm -hmm. look, look. But you don't hear any music. Is there any chance the music was like a music overlay for effect? Or is it definitely attempting to seem like music from the radio? It's certainly the not, not background audio that you'd put in unless mm -hmm. you did it really crappily because huh. it sounds like there's ambient noise yeah and the the people the people um the the vocal tracks um there's a lot of i don't know it seems like there's a lot of reverb reverb like they're in a room or something uh. and kind of overacted so i don't know it's it's very suspicious yeah that's so. very suspicious you know those are good points and you've worked in the music industry and so that's why the international business times quoted you as a, a an expert 
it's a quotable opinion. Yeah. Well, Alejandro, that is all the news I have for today. Everyone, remember to check out all these stories we talked about and many, many more at openminds.tv, your source for UFO-related news. I'm Jason McClellan, your UFO news guy, and I have just briefed you. Back to you, Alejandro. Thank you, UFO news dude.